Well, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Ron Hunting-Hockey. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at the Reardon Clinic. And this is another uh, segment of our Real Health Discovery Series, which uh, we're using to kind of inform people as to what we do uh, here at the Reardon Clinic. And I'm very fortunate to have as my guest Dr. Dustin Moffitt, who is up at the Hayes branch of the uh, Reardon Clinic. Dustin, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. Thanks for having, to, having me on here. Um, nice to share a little bit of information with everyone. You bet. And so uh, I wanted to talk with Dustin in particular about this concept of uh, regeneration. You don't really hear about regeneration or regenerative medicine at your your regular doctor's office. There's not a department of regeneration medicine at the medical center. So Dustin, what is regeneration and why is it part of real health discovery? Well, regeneration uh, pretty much says it within the title. We're helping to regenerate what, what would normally be there in the first place. Um, a lot of the times with healing, there, there's a disconnect. So well, all we're trying to do is stimulating, stimulate something called the wound healing cascade. Um, the way I usually describe it is, you know, everybody's gotten a bump or bruise or a cut or something and looking at the amount of inflammation or that redness that happens around that, all we're trying to do is start a controlled amount of inflammation. Um, in our society, we've kind of seen a lot of negative association with, with any kind of inflammation. Now, when we have chronic inflammation, that's a whole different story, but a short controlled um, bout of inflammation actually starts that regenerative uh, cascade or the wound healing cascade. So the, the three main steps are gonna be inflammation, and then we have that tear down and clean up, which is part of a uh, proliferation and remodeling kind of combined together. Um, so just kind of like when you're rebuilding parts of your house, you've got to tear things down. That's part of that inflammation part, clean it up and then get ready to, to remodel. You know, another word that comes to mind is degeneration. Now we do hear about that a lot in, in conventional medicine, that there are degenerative diseases and of course, degenerative arthritis. And a lot of people are getting joint replacements. So what you're saying that regeneration is kind of the opposite of degeneration. Correct. Yeah, so degeneration in small amounts would still be part of that inflammatory process that's needed. But when we think of degeneration, it's often that chronic inflammatory response. Um, so one that I'll kind of throw out there that everyone can, can correlate with is low back pain. So we see a lot of low back pain and the first time somebody in their mid thirties or beyond gets an X-ray or MRI or something, everybody shows some level of degeneration. Um, and that doesn't always mean that that's the pain causer. Um, but what, what I do see a huge trend in there is a certain joint in the low back um, called the facet joint. And very often um, on those imaging, we'll see facet arthrosis, which is just arthritis of that facet joint, which is a joint at the very back of the spine. And the degenerative changes in there, a lot of the times is, is what I see being an inflammatory cause um, uh, or the chronic cause of, of that low back pain. Not necessarily that, oh, your, your discs are starting to degenerate. Um, and a lot of the times the, the posterior part or the back part of the, the low back will degenerate because of that little bit of excessive inflammation that goes on in the facet joint. So is this, is this really aging? I mean, is it, is it, is it an abnormal kind of age? I mean, we all age and that's, that's quote normal, but are there factors that speed up the aging process and set people up for back pain and uh, arthritis and things that we call degenerative? Absolutely, there are things that set up, and sadly, it's kind of just living in the world that we're surrounded by. Um, we're surrounded by a lot of new toxins that our body just can't process. Um, the way our medicine has changed, the way our food has changed, there's a lot of inflammatory driving components to it. Um, 
a lot of people know about gluten and it, its proposed effect on inflammation. Well, here in America, we've actually hybrid is, uh, hybrid the wheat to contain more gluten per particle because it, it makes more fluffy bread and it's actually more tasty at that point. Um, but we also do see that gluten starts an inflammatory cascade in the GI system or in the gut. Um, that could be a small contributing factor, but just that this one example, there, there are many different reasons as why we're seeing a chronic inflammatory process. We also see that uh, worldwide obesity rates are going up and we know that fat weight uh, does fuel the inflammatory cascade quite predominantly. So these are kind of like chronic wounds, you know, whether you talk about toxins or stress, uh, lifestyle. So it's maybe what, what I, my understanding is, is we're not getting enough of what we need to heal the wound. And at the same time, we're being wounded more by environmental stressors, injuries, uh, toxins, things that keep us from uh, healing and regenerating. Is that kind of online? Absolutely. And, and through our real health panel, we actually see a lot of correlational deficiencies. So what are some things that we need to heal? Vitamin C is a big factor. Um, vitamin A, vitamin E, we see selenium, zinc, CoQ10, all these are, are small parts in, in why we heal and why we regenerate tissue. So nutrient deficiencies can lead into that chronic inflammatory process or slow wound healing. A lot of people, especially with uh, diabetes, they, they don't heal very quickly, right? So it's a error in the, the <laughs> shortfall of metabolism. So it's kind of a paradox then that in terms of, uh, well, I mean, there's two parts I, I'm seeing is that there's a part where we want to make sure the body has the basic uh, requirements, the elements, the nutrients, the cofactors, hormones, whatever it is that promotes the wound healing process. But if I understand it right, you do something called uh, prolotherapy and prolozone where you're actually inducing a wound in order to heal the wound. Could you kind of help our audience understand that paradox? Sure. Um, so I just kind of put everything in one place and it's called regenerative joint injections. Um, prolozone can fall under that, dextrose prolotherapy um, and platelet-rich plasma therapy. It's just kind of going up the tier of, of efficacy and how big of a, a reaction they'll mark. But just to, to shorten it up, we'll, we'll just describe them all kind of the same. So all it is is um, the injections are there to hydrodissect or for, for fluid pressure to kind of create micro injuries in an area. Um, and a lot of the times when we see scar tissue, it's just locked up tissue that doesn't have proper nerve um, fibers in it or the blood flow is kind of poor there. So what we're trying to do is start a healing cascade to bring in new growth factors that will stimulate new nerve fibers, new blood flow, um, and most importantly, the, the new collagen deposition. Uh, and collagen is really what helps give that structural integrity um, or in joints, it's what generates more fluid or, or grease in the joints. So the Reardon Clinic then contributes to regeneration by helping people to measure and find out where they're missing key healing nutrients that could be part of the healing process. But at the same time, uh, thanks to this technique of prolotherapy, we're also using a, a certain expertise to uh, bring about an acceleration or a proper Rehealing of an area that has not healed properly. Am I getting that right? I, I completely agree. So the real, the real health approach um, truly is the real health approach, where we're helping at a metabolic area. Um, but sometimes it's a little too slow going, as we know. Natural things can take quite some time, um, but the injections are are a very pinpoint area to stimulate localized growth. Because a lot of times when somebody has joint pain, they're, they're having localized inflammation or some kind of thing that's just not moving on out of that inflammatory cascade. So with a little bit of push in the right direction, uh, it, it gets things up and speedy. Uh, but a lot of the times when I do the injections, the, the two most predominating things that I require going through it 
are going to be a pretty high dose multivitamin because it just is a shotgun approach at multiple deficiencies. And then collagen, which increases um, the, the factors to, to make more collagen. Yeah, so, so the, the real discovery here, real health discovery, is that I bet you a lot of people don't know that when, it, when a, a joint has been, when it's degenerated into an area of pain and swelling, a lot of people think the only way to fix it is to replace it. And so can uh, prolotherapy or these different types of prolotherapy, can they uh, sometimes mitigate against replacement in an effort to try to regenerate the damaged joint? Yes, especially I, I can speak to, to knees very easily. Um, I see a lot of people in here that have been told by the orthopedic surgeons that they absolutely need joint replacement surgery and that there's no way around it. Well, after several rounds of um, any kind of regenerative injections, most time we're able to, to get them pain-free or uh, pain-stable at that point. Um, and we do see regenerative amount of meniscus come along with that. Uh, so it is absolutely something that could be a, an alternative to surgery. Very good. Okay, well, I'll give you the last word. Just, just one thing that I've, I'm sure the audience is kind of interested in. How did you personally get interested in regenerative medicine and, and techniques such as this? Well, a lot of it spiked from uh, doing a lot of um, shadowing with, with other docs that were doing it. Then I did post-septorship training. Um, but to kind of put a personal note, I've had chronic low back pain and this has made my low back pain a thing of the past. I, I don't really struggle from it anymore. Matter of fact, right now I'm going through knee treatments myself. So uh, low back pain was something that would flare up anywhere from th two to three weeks out of every single month. And it's just something I haven't had to deal with in over a year at this point because I, I finally completed treatment protocol on myself. Um, so I can speak from the doctor side as well as the patient side to to say that I've had huge success. Well, Dr. Moffat, thank you very much for really a, an illuminating discussion of regeneration. And I think there'll be a lot of people out there that are going to think twice uh, about surgery if there is a uh, simpler, safe way to approach the, uh, the joints that are not healing well. And then from a broader perspective, we want to make good lifestyle choices that help us maintain a, uh, a healthy uh, well-being and that 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 well-being is fostered by the, the whole process of regeneration which we have a say so in we can make better choices in favor of uh, having better health and so here at the Reardon Clinic we're here to help people discover those kinds of processes that will help them be their their very best and live their their longest in, in good health and so Thank you very much for this uh, discussion this morning, Dustin. We, we appreciate you very much. All right. Well, thank you for having me. This, this is always good to share extra knowledge and, and get people talking about what, what the way to their better health is. And thank you for those of you that are tuning in. Uh, please look forward to more in this series of Real, Real Health Discovery here at the Reardon Clinic. We appreciate your, uh, your interest and we hope to continue to serve in ways that stimulate an epidemic of health around the world. So thank you very much. Take care.